started, I'd like to tell you kind of the reasoning behind getting into all these suttas to begin with, these meditations and poetry and background information, is that I feel very lucky this year again that planet back in the shape that it should be, put our, put our intentions right, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, pray for people that need healing, and I'm, so I'm trying to give you some background information on how to, how to uh, get yourself set up with, with this energy that can be sent out through the universe to protect us and, and help us. So this is this is just a small part of it. Another thing that I will be doing in the coming weeks is adding some videos on things like Qigong and Tai Chi. So hopefully this along with the meditations um, and, and I'm trying to get to mind, body, spirit, you know, shebang before um, April 30th so uh, please stick around and subscribe and also I can tell you that on my website I have a bunch of information too and that is jilljj.com and if you look under the energy healings I'm going to continue with the heart of Buddhism. The story of the true recluses in dialogue. And a little note about this is this is perhaps the most artistic and charming psalms of the sisters in as much as it contains something about a dramatic development and a good deal of quiet humor. Rohini gives the purest motives of her love for the yellow robe brotherhood. The worldly minded householder adds the motive of self-interest and she quietly brings him back to the realities this time with good effect. As a contemporary picture of the Sangha, this poem is of unique interest. And um, I'll put a little, another little note about the yellow-robed brotherhood. Those would be called the Buddhist monks. <clears throat> So, the true recluses of dialogue. See, Father, see the holy men, thou criest, awaken me from sleep, O Rohini. And ever art thou praising the recluses? Say, daughter, wouldst thou join their company? Forever dost thou feed them on my substance. Say, why are these recluses dear to thee? A lazy crew of idle, good-for-nothings, who batten on the food of honest men. Cadgers they are, and fond of dainty feeding, 
Why dost thou love them, daughter? Tell me then. Full many a time, O Father, hast thou asked me, Come now, I'll tell thee of their lofty work. For workers truly are they of the noblest. Battle with hate and lust they do not shirk. Must I not love them, for their work is holy, holy in inward thought and word and deed, as pearl or ocean shell so pure and lustrous, untainted they by hatred, sloth, or greed. First in righteous law they are, and skillful, a, and they practice to the law they preach, learned and self-possessed and ever watchful, living in all things as the sages teach. Must I not love them? Far afield they wander, wise and so lowly minded and discreet, knowing the end of every ill and sorrow. See, Father, how they pace the village street downcast their eyes, their paces measured sober, they meditate, nor look to left or right, they lay not up on earth the fleeting treasure, finish their quest, their lofty goal in sight, poor are they too, yet touch not gold nor silver, each day supplies for them their simple needs. Many lands and towns they join the order, bound in sacred tie of loving deeds. Lucky the day when thou wast born, O maiden. Firm founded is thy faith in jewels thee. These are the harvest fields as well thou knowest, where there is very fruitful husbandry. I, too, will serve the worthy, true recluses. Such service is repaid most bounteously. Father, if any evil apprehending, thou wouldst be wholly rid of evil snare, to get thee to the master and take refuge straight to the holy norm thou do repair. I, and whatever the nobles, be he's be bid thee that do, for truest happiness lies there. Lo, now I'll hie me straight away to the Buddha, his holy teachings from the Vikas I'll uh, obtain, so shall I too observe the noble precepts and the best bliss on earth I'll surely gain. And then later, first I was but a holy, I was by, first I, excuse me, later, 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 first was I but by holy birth a Brahmin. This day I am a Brahmin made soothe attaining to the threefold Vedic knowledge bathed in the cleansing waters of truth. And the next reading that I have is called The Abode of Peace. Chulabhaga. These stanzas are attributed to Gautama Buddha and give thanks for the gift of 60 monastic cells made by a lay adherent to the Sangha. Caves of this kind still exist, notably the Na Nazik and Karli, looking out over the wide and peaceful vistas and forming ideal spots for meditation in undisturbed quiet. It is moving to stand in one of these ancient monasteries and to reflect that here, for many centuries, the peaceful sons of Buddha led the strenuous life of meditation. Centuries before the great tableland had 
become a battlefield for the Marathas and the Mongols. So here is the abode of peace only. Here cold and heat no soldier make, here ravenous beasts no entry find, nor stinging fly nor creeping snake, winter's cold rain nor summer's scorching wind. Here is a place to concentrate the thoughts to dwell serene apart, where a man of insight meditates, such habitations charm the sage's heart. These are choice gifts, therefore ye wise, having your own best will in mind, let sacred edifices, edifices rise to lodge the holy brethren of mankind. Raiment in fitting drink and food, an ample bedding now prepare. These offer to the brotherhood. Let them in turn the righteous law declare. So shall your misery removed, and ye be purged of every stain. Goodness and truth you'll learn to love, and loving shall ye long for goal attain. A few notes about this one too and um, as for the division of labor number one the sangha to meditate the layman to provide um, point number two the teacher appeals frankly to the motive of self-advancement Buddhist ethics are ultimately hedonistic number three there is much merit in the giving gifts to Sangha. The India of Asoka was thickly sown with, with uh, such sacred edifices, and Bihar got his name from the number of Viharas it contained. And in the Burma of today, pagodas form a distinctive part of the landscape. Um, where there are said to be thousand, where we say as many as the stars, the Burman says as many as the pagodas, as many as the pagodas of the Payon, and it is, I think, true to say that Buddhism is tending more and more to emphasize this doctrine of merit and uh, as Christianity at the same time rejects it. <clears throat> the next one that I have is on meditation. Theragatha. White against the dark stormed cloud, home fly the frightened cranes, the cave they seek is hid by rains, the toads awakened, he rope loud. Here where streamlets rush in spate, beneath the dark trees all meditate. Big with rain is the stormy sky, the arrested peacock calls his mate. The earth gleams fresh with greenery. A fitting time to meditate in Buddha's precepts, be not slack. Hard to travel is the track that leads to bliss, no turning back. The next one is about heroic measures. Very short one. Not for sleep is the star-spangled night, but for work, O vigil, O sage. What if the elephant's rider, unseated, be mauled in the brute in his rage? Better for me than to live on defeated is to die in the thick of the fight.
And the next one is holding up, holding the mirror up to nature. Another very short one. The barber came to dress my hair. I took a mirror from his hand and in it all my body scanned. And whilst I gazed low then and there, I knew the vileness of the flesh. So broke I through the clinging mesh of ignorance and cast aside the unclean garment of my pride. Now stripped of vanity I go, no more shall I be born to woe. Uh, next one I have is called a converted worldling. A worldling, I who gave my mind to dress, a thrall to pride and wanton wickedness, until I listened to the sage and let his gracious words massage my craving's thirst for sensuous happiness. Next is called Noblesse Oblige. Noblesse Oblige. And when a blood horse falls beneath the shafts and stung with shame doth struggle to arise, so think of me, a nobly gendered son, whom the great teacher's insight maketh wise. The next one is a hero of the solitary way. Blind and alone, my way I win. The desert sands before, behind, shunning the haunts of evil men. Here, let me die alone and blind. The next one is All is Fleeting. Days and nights go speeding past. Life itself doth pass away. As the river rushes fast, men hasten by and may not stay, though they would pitted sting ignore. Fools the doom of sin endure, retribution cometh sure. And the next is called e Next one I have is Perseverance Credo Experto. I'm finding it kind of interesting how I'm I'm looking at Sanskrit and I've got Latin here and um, the British translation in an ancient book. So uh, this is this is perseverance, and I have to say it's a little hard to read too. Because does anybody remember the old days of of um, actual books? Now they're on this thing called microfiche, and I'm seeing some some um, fingerprints on top of the print. So um, I'm gonna. I have to say that this is a little bit difficult to read, but Credo Experto. Um, once had thou a face, thou hast it not. That is thy fault, not mine, O son. Frail is this wavering faith I wot. Men grasp, lose hold, and are undone, but these old leggings are strong and stout. To beg my food I must set out. A little there, a little there, a little here. 
thus also thou persevere. Hope for the climber. He who falls may rise again, falling lose not heart of hope. Up the steep and slippery slope, I too struggle to attain, and because I love the good, swift I found beatitude. Next I have the victory of the Stoic. Disease assailed this mortal frame, and straight my mind awoke. Come play, the man within me spoke, the voice that to the rescue came. And a note about this, this little poem admirably contrasts the transient frail body with the eternal mind of man similarly following the poem contrasts the, bo the body in its dull commonplace surroundings with the far wandering mind which may not be bound so the next one that I have is called the kingdom of the mind lest is the lesson my teacher has taught I live in the village but ever in thought. I escape to the jungle, no fetters for me, for wisdom has set most, me most gloriously free. The Undaunted Heart Alone I dwell in a dreadful cave. The rain pours gurgling ceaselessly. These things for me no terrors have, heeding them not, my mind is free. Which leads into a contented mind is a blessing kind. Cold and dark is the winter's night. It chaps the skin, it freezes thought. Where shall the shivering Ibiku lie? In safe barns the harvest brought. The Magadhans rejoice, and I rejoice with them. I'll sleep all right in good warm straw this winter's night. And the next one is the strenuous life of meditation. Too cold for work, too hot, too late it is. Men think and lose their opportunities. But some of heat and cold make light and work away in their despite. Come seek we jungle solitude and cultivate the strenuous mood. Next is a Buddhist's Anthony. Fragrant with sandalwood and garlanded, a girl was dancing gaily in the street with the softest strains of flute accompanied I chance upon my begging round to meet the harlot as she plied her shameful trade, O snare by Mara set, licentious jade, my gorge arose, my mind was free, the dharma's work behold in me, fruit of the sage's husbandry. And the next two are about a new man and a new woman. Happy I in freedom blight life. The crooked things I've laid aside, the plow, the hoe, the heavy seed. There they lie, there let them bide. The strenuous life of meditation free. This is the life henceforth for me. It's for a new woman. Happy freedom, liberated bride, to bondage never to return. The crooked things are laid aside, my mortal and my butter churn. I, for my crooked hunchback lord, freedom from birth and death, deaths assured.
Hmm. Here's another interesting one. Unsafe confidence. I'm finding the uh, spelling kind of interesting to the uh, English-British version compared to what I'm used to as an American here. Unsafe confidants. Nine beings are unstable, fickle, mean, the lustful, angry, easily beguiled, the coward too, and he who seeks for gain. Men and eunuchs, the drunken and the child, for what is told to them in secrecy, the public comes to know immediately. As, wrecking not of self, a mother's love unfolds and cherishes her only son, so through the world let thy compassion move and compass living creatures every one, soaring and sinking in unfettered liberty, free from ill will, purged of all animity. one called a compassion to animals, a charm against snakes. I have a note here, this charm reminds us of the fairy song of uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Folklore. On things that crawl, my love is shed on bite and on quadrupled, on those with many feet. May crawling things do me no wrong. May those that run on feet along do no offense to me. All creatures that have life within and all are sentient kith and kin, may ye from every hurt be free and live beside us peacefully. One of the main credos of Buddhism is first of all do no harm and by this it is meant do no harm to sentient beings, beings and by sentient what is meant is by um, beings with feelings. And so this includes both animals and things like animals, um, amphibians, fish, and of course humans. circles um, because of because of the caste system and um, the inequality you know that comes along with it in modern day India not matted here nor heritage of birth can prove the Brahmin nay but sterling and truthfulness and inward purity. What boots your sackcloth, your tousled hair? On outward things, poor fools, ye lavish care. Ye who are rotting, rotting inwardly. Labels false and true. Not by birth the outcast label, 
not by birth the Brahman know, by actions only are we able to judge a man, high or low. And I have one that's about victory and blessing. liberality the sage attained to victory such was his chosen armory Mara by all his hosts attended with thousands flashing swords defended on his war elephant so proudly seated in a panoply of steel the sage defeated be yours his glorious victory and yours is ample blessing be by patience and tranquility. Such was his chosen panoply. The sage achieved the victory. Alavaka, the demon dread. The lifelong night he combated with heart of brass redoubled to fiercer than Mara, the lord of hell. Be yours his glorious victory and yours its ample blessing be by compassion flowing free he won the glorious victory or elephant Nalagiri in the dreadful thunder crashing as the lurid lightning flashing as the jungle fire encroaching he beheld a brute approaching be yours his vic glorious victory and yours its ample blessing be by his wondrous magic power stood he as a mighty tower in a still more fearsome hour bandit dread with human fingers garlanded trophies of his victims dead him to sage discomfited be yours his glorious victory and yours its ample blessing be by peace and self-control serene was the mighty sage victorious seen a glorious victory i ween and chincha feigning pregnancy accused him of unchastity and slanderous lying rumors woke among the simple country folk be yours his glorious victory be yours his sample blessings by wisdom's piercing lemon flash, all Sakasha too did he abash, and all his trumpetry weapons smash with envious heart enmity, and blinded with perversity, he came against the mighty sage and sought with lies the war to wage. Be yours his glorious victory and yours the ample blessings be his pupil too by magic might did aid him in the heroic flight and put him to the dreadful and put the dreadful snakes to fight the sage's spiritual son in spirit in serpents guides the victory won prevailing by his magic power or demons twain in that dread hour be yours his glorious victory and yours its ample blessings be by knowledge did the mighty sage such warfare did he wage back o the brahman god engage a god was he of power and light but poisoned by the ever bite of the sharp fang of wrong belief in wisdom's drug he found relief be yours his glorious victory and yours its ample blessings be whoso is wise with wakeful mind alert shall say these victory blessings constantly so shall he ever threatening ill avert and tranquil come to happy freedom presently
And so I'm going to stop the um, readings from the Heart of Buddhism for the time being. I have a rather lengthy end to this, and I'm not sure if I will uh, continue reading this, this last part, which has to do with, it's looking history and life of, of Buddha, which actually is one of those things that can be, it's, it's uh, pretty prevalent all over the place um, to, to find this, and so I think that I'm going to move on after, unless I found some really particularly interesting and shorter poems in there. So, the rest of this video, I'm going to say again that you can just continue